Dead space ventilation is essentially wasted ventilation and that is a result of some type of perfusion issue. So low perfusion to your alveolus or your alveoli. So we're bringing air in and out just fine. So our ventilation is okay, but our Q, which is flow or perfusion is low. So here I've drawn this capillary uh, network, which would usually participate in gas exchange with this alveolus, um, but there is essentially no flow here. So I say this is wasted ventilation because you're moving air in and out of this area that is unfortunately not participating in gas exchange, um, which sort of defeats the purpose of your lungs. Typically, we think of um, dead spaces causing issues with CO2 and with high enough dead space, it will cause CO2 retention or hypercapnia. Usually you'd be bringing CO2 through this vessel into the alveolus to be exhaled, but since we're not actually bringing any flow to this alveolus, this cannot happen and we will not be breathing out as much CO2. To define this, um, the volume of dead space is the ventilated gas not participating in gas exchange with the capillaries. And this is going to be the combination of alveolar dead space, which we've just shown here, and anatomic dead space. We would call the combination of those things physiologic dead space. The anatomic dead space is anywhere in your airways that wasn't designed to participate in gas exchange. Your trachea and bronchus and bronchioles are all anatomic dead space. The typical physiologic dead space, so the combination of alveolar and anatomic dead space, is about 2 mils per kilo in uh, average sized upright adults, and that equates to about 150 mils. So let's show that on this diagram. Let's say our tidal volume is 500 mils. We're going to breathe that in. This person will have the dead space of the average adult, so about 150 mils. And this is going to be the combination of this anatomic dead space and the alveolar dead space, which we'll find in the rest of the lungs here. And then let's just look at this area of the lung zoom in on that and we're going to say that we have 350 mils so the rest of our breath here 500 minus 150 for our alveolar ventilation so this va specifically refers to ventilation of the alveoli that are getting perfused so not these ones but uh, when they're being perfused regularly that's the va here which is the volume of gas in the alveoli that are participating in gas exchange Take a look at this diagram where we'll have um, 40 millimeters of mercury of CO2 coming in through our pulmonary capillary network. Since these alveoli have perfusion to them, they'll be part of the alveolar volume. And what we'll see is that this 40 millimeters of mercury of CO2 will leave and equilibrate with all of these alveoli. On the other side of this diagram, we have no perfusion or no flow to these alveoli. And so this is going to be alveolar dead space because the air that comes in here will not get any CO2 because there's no blood going past here. So no CO2 and no CO2 here or here. With our breath in, all of these alveoli will get the same amount of air because we're saying there's no ventilation issues here. And then when we exhale, all of this gas will get mixed. So the gas that has no CO2 in it will mix with our gas that has 40 CO2 in it from our blood. And the result of that, if we measure it, will be only 20 millimeters of mercury. So our um, exhaled CO2 concentration is the combination of what was from our alveolar dead space and our ventilated alveoli. 
we were using the expired CO2 here to inform us about the content of CO2 in the blood, we would be falsely informed that it's low. That's because there's a gap between these that exists because of the dead space. Hopefully by now it makes sense that your tidal volume is equal to the sum of your dead space ventilation and your alveolar ventilation. Another way you could write this is that your actual alveolar ventilation, so the amount of ventilation to the alveoli participating in gas exchange is equal to your tidal volume minus the amount of dead space. And it becomes clear to you that you need tidal volumes that are greater than your dead space in order to actually ventilate the perfused alveoli. And of course that is for gas exchange to occur. This patient has a dead space of 150 mils. So if they were to just be breathing with a tidal volume of 100 mils, so let's say they're just moving this air column up and down, it's not going to participate in gas exchange at all. So they will not be breathing off their CO2. And actually in this extreme example, they won't be breathing in any fresh oxygen either. So this person will also have issues with oxygenation.